So scripture refers to three heavens. First heaven is the sky. Second heaven is referred to outer space, stars, planets. Third heaven is the dwelling place of God. And the apostle Paul was caught up in this place. So was John. And when we're talking about heaven, we are referring to the third heaven. The Bible will say, the heavens declare your glory. They're referring to all of earth that we see, the sky, right? But also the outer space, even what you cannot see. So like atmospheres. Don't get that confused with that's where you're going to go when you die. No, when you die, you're literally going to go into the celestial city, the place that he has created for us in the third heaven. Colossians 1.13 says that he has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Isaiah 66.1 says heaven is my, my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? Where is the place of my rest? We have made him and will continue to make him our resting place. And 1 right? Corinthians 2.9 says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. What is heaven like? What is heaven like? Has it been praying? And What do you want to say to your people, Lord? I pray that all the time. I don't just get up here and think I'm going to just teach you something. I make sure that I've prayed and I've asked the Lord, what is on your heart, Father? And immediately, immediately, I heard that scripture. This scripture here, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. You know, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, have entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And immediately after that, I, heaven, I thought of heaven. And I know the Lord was saying, I want you to bring this message on what is heaven like? What is heaven like? You know that the Bible says that in, in Jesus spoke more about hell than he even did about heaven. But yet, God, when we were saved from the dominion of darkness, when we said yes to Jesus, he, he could have just stopped right there. We would know that we weren't going to hell. We would know that when we die, we just don't go to a place of eternal torment, in a place of eternal punishment, right? But he didn't do that, did he? In his incredible love for us, not only do we know we get to have a relationship with him here on earth, but we also know that we have an eternal destiny. We're not just dead in the ground and that's it. And we, we missed, you know, we, we were saved from going to hell. We literally have an eternal destiny, which is eternity with Christ in heaven. A glorious place that he has already laid out for us to enjoy. And it's powerful when you think that, first of all, this is not our home. We are passing by. We are ambassadors in Christ. But literally heaven is our home. For, for those that have made their commitment to Christ and they walk with him, heaven is your home. Your last breath here on earth will be your first breath in heaven. Isn't that powerful? Your last breath here is literally your first breath in heaven. And that's pretty powerful. See, as, as Christians, we have something to get excited about, and that is as God's plan, master plan, is incredible for us. And so don't you think that we should maybe know a little bit more about it? There is a literal heaven and there is a literal hell. So I'm just going to go through some of these points here and uh, we'll just, and I know that the Holy Spirit will be speaking to all of you. Hell is an eternal separation from God. It's a fiery lake of burning sulfur. Say, you're not going, I'm not going there. But it was created for demons, you know this. It wasn't even created for people. But yet some people will choose to go there simply because they haven't chosen Christ. But it was never created for people. Heaven is eternity with God. Yes, it's a place. But it's a place that we're going to spend eternity with him. And in Matthew 25, 46, it says this. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous, we are righteous because of Christ's righteousness in us, the righteous into eternal life. We're going into eternal life. 
In Luke 10, 20, we are instructed to rejoice because our names are written in heaven. Your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 20 says, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but yes, rejoice, but just rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You get to rejoice because God knows you by name. You get to rejoice because you have been identified as a beloved son or daughter of the Lord. You are known. Amen. So scripture refers to three heavens. Psalm 19.1 says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Now, three heavens. First heaven is the sky. It's the sky. It's the firmament. It's the clouds. Second heaven is referred to outer space stars, planets. Third heaven, the third heaven is the dwelling place of God. And the apostle Paul was caught up in this place. So is John. The third heaven is the, is when people, when we say, when we're talking about heaven, we are referring to the third heaven. We are referring to this eternal dwelling place of God. So when they say, cause the Bible will say the heavens declare your glory. They're referring to all of earth that we see, the sky, right? But also the outer space, even what you cannot see. So like atmospheres, like layers. But don't get that confused with that's where you're going to go when you die. No, when you die, you're literally going to go into the celestial city, the place that he has created for us in the third heaven, right? So let me give you a few scriptures. Psalm 19.1 says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show his handiwork. Genesis 1.8 says, and God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. This is at creation. Psalm 8.3, when you look at the heavens, the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which you have set in place. So clearly, we can see, even just from these few scriptures, you know, first heaven, second heaven, but third heaven is what we're going to focus on. The third heaven is what we're going to uh, talk about here today, because that is the place of eternal joy and eternal dwelling place that we are referring to. Amen. Is that clear? Did you all know that there were heavens, but we're not, when, when people say heavens, uh, they're not referring to the eternal dwelling place of God. That's the third heaven. Okay. So what will heaven look like? The Apostle Paul was caught up to the third heaven. Before we read that scripture, I want you to think about this. Because Paul, who wrote most of the books in the New Testament, couldn't find the words to describe what he saw. He couldn't find the words to describe it. And we know that he was a man that was very well educated we know that he was a man that was sold out. We know that God entrusted him to write most of the New Testament. But yet, when he had this vision, he really couldn't, he really couldn't put the words to it that would have done it justice. That's a beautiful place, God's creativity. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 4. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. He's saying stop getting caught up in if this was an in the body, out of the body. God knows. It's not the point. He says such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Right there, third heaven. We know if there's a third heaven, there's a first and second. Just by nature of logic but i've already read to you some scriptures that would also talk about what those first and second would be and i know such a man whether in the body or out of the body i do not know again he says god knows how he was caught up into paradise and he heard inexpressible words inexpressible he could not express what he heard which is not lawful for a man to utter. It wasn't just that they were inexpressible. He even, he felt it was even not even lawful for him to be able to describe that which he saw. Tell me that is not 
beyond description. Incredible. That's the Apostle Paul. John, the Apostle John also saw the heavenly city, and he saw the heavenly city while he was exiled on the island of Patmos. He had a vision of the risen Christ, which is what is documented in the book of Revelation. That was his vision. You guys, the whole book was his vision. He fell to the ground, and we're going to read it in a moment here. He fell to the ground like a dead man when this vision started to occur. When he saw Jesus, he fell to the ground like a dead man because he saw the risen Christ. But let's remember that John the Beloved, not John the Baptist, John the Beloved, who rested on Jesus' bosom, this is the, at the Last Supper, this is the intimacy that John had with Jesus. But yet, he falls to the ground like a paralyzed man. Let's turn to Revelation and in chapter 1. The awe of God is something that we need to consider. So Revelation uh, chapter 1, starting in verse 10. I'm going to read from 10 to 19. So verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega. These are Jesus' words. The first and the last. What you see, write in a book. This was Holy Spirit directed. The Lord told him exactly what to do. Write in a book what you see. Send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And by the way, we are the lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet and girded about with, with the chest with a golden band. He's, he's literally seeing the Son of Man in the midst of all of these golden lampstands. Jesus in the center of us. His head and his, he says his head and his hair were white like wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. You think about the sound of many waters. Have you ever heard the sound of many waters? It, it, like it's majestic. It's so powerful, right? He had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And the countenance, his countenance, was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. The awe of God. He, the Lord, laid his right hand on me and he said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Again, he says, write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which, which will take place after this. Hallelujah. He falls. He sees Christ. He sees the risen Christ. And he falls falls to the ground like a dead man. That's incredible because God was going to show him from that moment on a whole lot more. Not just what heaven looks like, but all the activity that goes on in heaven, in and then the creation of the new heaven, new Jerusalem. You know, there's so much that God then goes forth and reveals to him in this book of revelation and we really need to read the book even on your own and don't listen to the lie that says oh it's too hard to understand it's a crazy book or it's very difficult because it's strange or weird that may be true to a degree like you read it and it's 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 out there sometimes you're like wow all these eyes on the you know all these wings like wow you know we don't have to understand it all but there is a blessing when we read it 
There is a blessing when we read it. And you know what I've found too over the years is the more that you read it, the more that you actually start to understand more revelation. You start to see the depth. There's still questions about some of the things that are kind of strange, but at the same time, you know God has a purpose for it all. And in time, things will become more and more clear and heaven. revealed. So what else is in heaven? Okay, we, we've just identified what Jesus looks like. We identified what, what John, uh, you know, what, how John reacted when he saw Jesus, how he fell like a dead man. You know, when he was on this island of Patmos, it's because they couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill him. So here he is on this island of Patmos, and God's like, I'm going to go ahead and reveal myself to you, and you're going to write this whole book. And it's going to be the last book of the Bible. Turn to Revelation 21. Because there's no, there's no tears, there's no pain, there's no sorrow in heaven. Revelation 21. And for some that have gone through some pretty horrific things in life, you say, amen, there is no pain, there's no tears, there's no sorrow in heaven. And this is our home. Amen. Revelation 21, starting in verse 4. It says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, for there shall be no more death. There's no death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, any kind of pain, physical or emotional, any kind of pain. It says, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, write for me. These words that are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Do we thirst for him? We thirst, we hunger and thirst for him. And he gives us the water of life. It's literally flowing out of us in the form of the Holy Spirit. And he who overcomes which we are overcomers, he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Stay in chapter 21, but go down to verse 21. 21, 21. It says, the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Imagine that. Imagine that. And it says, each individual gate was of one pearl. One huge pearl, each gate. And not only that, but the street of the city is pure gold. Pure gold. And it says like transparent glass. Beautiful. God's incredible creativity Amen. creating a place for us that he didn't have to. We could have just stayed dead. We could have just said, thank you for sparing me from hell eternal damnation but no he goes to such incredible lengths to create such a glorious place for his bride for us and it's because he loves us it's because he loves us so so dearly he wants to spend time with us he wants us to worship him he wants us to make him our dwelling place. He wants that now, but he wants that forever, Amen. not just for a little bit. And what's awesome is, is that he's the best dad, best daddy God. He's the best father. And look at what he's prepared for us because it, because there's more, there's more that you, that describe, there's more that describes what heaven is. God of glory, radiance, rare jewels, sea of glass, no darkness, no sun, because God is going to be the light. So in Revelation 22, Starting in verse 1, it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life. It's pure. Everything that God creates, pure, holy. He showed me a pure river, the water of life. And we know the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He shows John this pure river of water, water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb of God. God's throne. And proceeding from God's throne is this beautiful, pure river of the water of life. In the middle of its street, and it says, and on either side of the river was a tree of life, 
Doesn't it start sounding a lot like the Garden of Eden church? In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And listen to this. And they shall see his face. We shall see his face. I mean, we're so grateful for what God has created for us in this glorious place. It's beautiful. It's incredible. But to me, the most important is that we shall see his face, face to face. Uh, we shall see his face. We shall see your face, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. And it says, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. There's no need for a lamp or for, or, nor light of the sun, for the Lord gives them light. He is our light. He is our light. Amen. And so there's no need for any of the external lights because he's our light. Hallelujah. Turn to Revelation 4.3. Revelation 4, 3. Because the throne of God, the Lamb of God sitting on the throne, and then a, a rainbow. But this rainbow is emerald in color, circling. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in, the, in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne. In appearance, like an emerald. Glorious. Beautiful. Wow. Lord, what you have done for us. In Revelation 4, you know, there's all, all like I said, all throughout Revelation, you can, you'll can you read different parts. But in Revelation 4, I'm going to quickly turn there. Um, because it also talks about four living creatures that do not rest day or night because they're crying out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come in Revelation chapter 4. Verse 1, it says, after these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the, the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, come up here, and I will show you the things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and the one, Jesus, sat on the throne. Verse 3. And then it goes, and it says, he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Goes on, it says, around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes. We are clothed in God's strength and dignity. We are clothed in robes of righteousness, church. Literally, this is what the word says. We are clothed in robes of righteousness because of God's righteousness. And so these 24 elders, they're around this throne, and they're clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their head. You are already crowned. Though you may not see the crown, you've already been crowned. You've been crowned with his royalty, his royal diadem. You have been crowned. We, and it's important that we... Get this understanding and walk in this revelation because, see, there is no wickedness that can come near a child of God that knows who they really are in Christ. Your position, your position in Christ, because you are an ambassador, you do carry his name, and you are his mouthpiece here on earth, and you have an eternal destiny, and we are describing what it is and where we're going, and it is beautiful. And we are going to worship him forever in heaven. But God also has assignments and jobs that we will do. And, and later on, you know, you'll read how they literally cast their crowns at his feet. And we get to do that too. But like I always tell you, why wait? Why don't you do it now? Why are we not crying? And I believe we are. I believe that 
Every time we come for worship, every time we come and we gather, what do we do? And we're pouring out our hearts before him, but we're literally casting our crowns before him and saying, Lord, I love you, and I am so grateful. We're sold out to you. No, everything is not perfect, but you are. And because you are perfect, Lord God, uh, biblically, so are we. Hallelujah. A couple of the things that I want to point out about heaven. Heaven is a real place. It's a physical place. So John, John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Keep going. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. This is, this is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus has said. So heaven is a real place. It's a physical place. Because, you know, there are people, I don't know, maybe you haven't heard this, but I have, that it's not a real place. It's just in your mind, you know, that heaven is just um, God in your heart, you know. Uh, no, no, actually, Jesus said he went and he prepared a place for us, and it's actually a real place, and, you know, and we know we have testimonies of people that have died and have gone to heaven, even hell, and they'll come back and testify. We know that we have some accounts like that, but church, we have the Bible, which already gives us the fullness of the account of what was allowed to say. Like I said, John felt like a dead man, right? And Paul felt like it wasn't even lawful for him to even speak about it. That's how incredible, that's how beyond words it is. But yet he did, they did give us some description. That's not the only description. That's just what we know about what was written, right? But I love the fact that there's so much more he wants to share with us about heaven, but he's given us what he has given us. And, and imagine, you know that song, I Can Only Imagine. Love that song. I can only imagine. There are some things we can just only imagine, but he certainly has given us enough to really dream and to be like, wow. Yeah, taste and see how good he is. We, we can taste, we see, and we're like, wow, this is amazing. This is incredible. How much more he has for us. It's important that we think about heaven because it is created for us. It's our home. It's where we're going. When you were younger, you probably didn't think of heaven too much. But some, some, as you get older, especially as you go through some difficult things, I think we start turning our attention to heaven a little bit more. <laughs> now, trust me, I'm not a negative person because I know the devil is under my feet and I don't just stop. I'm like, mm -mm, no, 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 I'm victorious right now. But, but at the same time, we know that even in that, as good as it can be here on earth, it doesn't compare to what he has prepared for us. And everlasting joy in heaven. I'm going to quickly finish here. Everlasting joy. Luke 6, 23. It says, rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. Oh, we have great rewards here too. But great is our reward in heaven.